When you pluck a guitar string, you're sending a transverse wave up towards the nut, which then reflects back and travels down the string back towards the bridge and reflects back again. This process can then repeat over and over again so that the transverse wave interferes with itself, giving you a wave that's no longer moving from left to right, but is oscillating in one place. Yep, that's a standing wave. And yes, it's a bit weird. Hello and welcome to Underdog Physics. Standing waves are a result of progressive waves interfering with each other. Just to clear some stuff up, a progressive wave is one that travels from one place to another and a standing wave is just one that doesn't go anywhere but oscillates in place. Here is a cartoon of a guitar string that's not doing anything, it's in equilibrium. If we lift up the middle of the string, then let go, the tension along the string will pull the displacement back. The string will overshoot of course, but as the displacement extends the other side of equilibrium, the tension will eventually force it back into equilibrium. Thanks, Hooke's Law. This process repeats and gives us a standing wave. As it happens, this is the largest wavelength that will actually fit on this string, a wavelength that is twice the length of the string that it's on. The tension of the string, among other things, dictates how frequently this disturbance moves back and forth. And so we have our fundamental frequency. The fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency that will fit on a given string of a particular length at a particular tension. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The fundamental frequency is not the only frequency standing wave that can exist on our string. Oh, no, 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 no. Other frequencies can also fit. Really? Yes, really. If you don't believe me, pluck the very middle of that E string on your guitar. Do it a few more times just to make sure. Now pluck the same string, but towards one of the ends instead. Say what? The difference in tone we can hear is because there's more than one standing wave on that string. We're just hearing different combinations of standing waves. We get all kinds of combinations depending on how and where we pluck that string. Consider that earlier cartoon of a guitar string. Here is a cartoon of a guitar string that's not doing anything. It's in equilibrium. We're going to displace two parts of our string, one up and one down in a controlled fashion, then let them go. The resulting vibrations look like this. Like I said earlier, it's possible for a guitar string to have multiple standing waves oscillating on it at a given time. For example, we can get our string to vibrate with the fundamental frequency, this one, and the first harmonic, this one, simultaneously. It looks a bit like this. Sorry for the poor animations. But when we play a guitar, or any other stringed instrument for that matter, we're not plucking the strings in any controlled particular way, we're just whacking them any old hand. So how do these symmetrical waves come to exist? It's all about interference. No, I don't mean that. I mean constructive and destructive interference of waves. Come on. Let's look at our cartoon guitar string one more time. Here is a cartoon of a guitar string that's not doing anything. It's in equilibrium. If we wiggle one end, the wave shape that we make travels from one end of the string down to the other end. This wave is a progressive wave because the wave shape is actually moving down the string. For the next simulation, I'm going to send down a rather boring looking wave shape because A, it's easier for me to animate, and B, it'll demonstrate what I want to talk about next much more clearly. When we send our wave shape, or disturbance, down the string, it reflects off the end and comes back. It flips upside down when it does this, but that's not really a surprise considering our earlier animation. Let's send down two disturbances, one of them after the other one is reflected back. And let's see what happens when they run into each other. There was a moment there when the string was completely flat. The waves kept going on their merry way afterwards, of course, but that moment where they appeared to disappear entirely is what we call destructive interference. In short, the disturbance on the wave is a combination of both those wave shapes, and in this case, it was flat. Constructive interference is where the combination of two waves, or disturbances, adds up together to give you a larger amplitude wave, or disturbance. Like this. Or like this. Standing waves occur when two waves interfere destructively and constructively at just the right points along the length of the string. This ends up meaning that standing waves will only form on our string if the length of the string is an integer number of half wavelengths. Here's what I mean. A string that has length one half wavelength, two half wavelengths, or one whole one, three half wavelengths, or one and a half wavelengths, four half wavelengths, or two whole wavelengths, and so on and so forth. If the wavelengths of the wave that we send down the string fit on the string like this, we'll get our standing wave. If the wavelength of the waves don't fit on the length of the string, they'll eventually destructively interfere enough so they dissipate and then don't exist anymore. 
Plucking the string sends all manner of shapes of waves down that string. Lots of them will form standing waves, just by pure luck, and the rest of them will destructively interfere and dissipate and not form standing waves. Right, that's all I've got time for for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below with any ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future. Standing waves are the result of one, two. If the wavelengths of the waves we sent down the string fit on the wave, fit on the other.